I am not going to push you today. I'm simply going to encourage you to look at your business differently than you've ever looked at it before. The moment you understand that human beings buy experiences is the moment you'll be more successful. And the key to successful leadership is about having clarity of your own heartbeat and then getting that heartbeat beating in the chest of your followers. You're all intelligent. You all have good intentions. And you all sometimes know there's a gap between your intentions and between reality. What we got to figure out is how to close that gap. Well, the byline of the company is it's all about results. Those aren't our results, those are your results. Okay, raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. Put it against your partner's right hand. Don't get excited, boys. Doesn't mean anything. Hold your hands together. Hold your hands together like that. I want you to choose an A person and a B person. Great speaker, very motivational, dynamic. It was excellent. He's an energetic speaker. I have 95 associates who I said, you've got to be here. And just walking around after this session and listening to them, they are so up, they're so positive. They really needed this and they, they've done, they were so excited about it. Listen carefully to the instructions. Here we go. Listen carefully, hands together. A people, A people, push. B people, why are you pushing? Well, the first time I met Michael Staber was at a conference in Denver, and he was a keynote speaker. And we hear speakers, wonderful speakers at our conferences, but with Michael, after the speech was over, it stayed with you and that happens so seldom with speakers. My whole style is really fundamentally about helping the audience where the audience is. I do not build custom PowerPoint presentations that I have to stick with the slides. I think all of us have been to meetings before where the slides became the presentation. And for me, the message is, is about me connecting with the people in the audience and helping them get a sense of it so that I can move freely topic to topic or if Right before the meeting, I find that the organization's faced with a specific challenge, I can adapt it on the fly. Really, that adaptability is at the heart and soul of what I do. He always finds a way to connect to a person. He listens, picks, he picks up a way to connect. That's what makes him unique. There is not one person in this organization that has not found a way to truly resonate with mine. Last July, I woke up at about uh, 9 o'clock, maybe 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning and it struck me like a bolt of lightning. I was, in fact, having a midlife crisis. You know, since the beginning of time, I mean, back in the cave people days, storytelling was the way we communicated messages. Uh, even today, the news media, we, we communicate as human beings based on how they tell stories. And so one of the strategies that I use that I think is very important, probably the most important strategy I use other than just being real, is using stories to communicate messages. You know, it's one thing to tell a story and people go, okay, that's a nice story, but what the heck does it mean to me? So I got on my, in my convertible and I drove down Highway 17, I got on 9A, drove over the Dames Point Bridge, got off on Atlantic Boulevard, hung a right, drove a block and a half, hung another right, pulled into the parking lot of the Midlife Crisis Center in Northeast Florida. Now, it just so happens that in Northeast Florida, the Midlife Crisis Center happens to be in a dealership. Who would have thought? <laughs> and so I pull into the dealership where Bill's office happened to be, who would have thunk it, and uh, what kind of dealership was it? That's right, buddy. It's a Harley Davidson dealership. It's another thing to give some point that's on point, but it's kind of dry. So what I really am about is saying, how do real life stories help you learn what you need to do to affect the changes that, that are necessary? I said to Bill, I want to buy a motorcycle. Bill looked me right in the eyes. You know what he said? If you want to buy a motorcycle, Mike, you're in the wrong store. If you want to buy freedom and the best experience of your life, that's what I'm going to do. I'm like, bring it! And I think that storytelling is a very effective way to do that. I personally enjoy that part of the speaking process, and so that's probably the strategy that's most effective. We have a sophisticated management team. I've been with Michael Saunders for 23 years, and we have great depth in our management team. 
So when you can impact people with that kind of knowledge and those skills and still feel that there's been a change made for the better, I think it's a I think it's a win-win. He touches your heart. I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, he touches you at your core. It's not about just the organization. It's not about, you know, where where's Long Realty going? He touches each individual, whether it be a one-on-one -on -one or, again, talking to a huge group of people. He touches your heart. I say all the time there are only a few types of speakers. Ones who have something to say, but don't say it very well. Those who have nothing to say and say it really well, and those that have something to say and say it well. And I think a blend between entertainment and content that's immediately applicable in the lives of the attendees is what makes for a great meeting, but it also makes for people to have some utility in what's going on. It connects with everybody. And, you know, some of my employees have used them said, the best thing I did all year was hire Mike Staver. What's unique, though, is that Mike drives those points home in a very, very entertaining, hearable way. Mike was part of our leadership team. We don't really, we live in a culture that's so fast paced, we don't have time anymore or the benefit anymore of wasted time and energy. So feeling good for feeling good's sake is not really that great, and content for content's sake is not really that great. We need to have a blend of both. I thought it was great, and he, he energized everybody, and it was just the right talk. Fundamentally, for me, it's all about results. And it's not about results as I define them, it's about results as you define them. Pick up the hammer of opportunity, strike it against the anvil of possibility, catch the sparks on your fingertips, cast them across the northwestern United States so people know. It's all about results is the beginning and end of anything that I do or my company does. And they need to know that because you care enough to pay attention to them. Thank you very much. Take care.